In this video, we will define atomic number, define mass number, define atomic mass, talk about the relative atomic mass and discuss isotopes. So let's get started by defining the atomic number. The atomic number is the number of protons found in the nucleus of an atom of a specific element. It's a unique identifier for each element on the periodic table and it determines the element's chemical properties and its position within the periodic table. For example, hydrogen has one proton, so it has an atomic number of one, whereas carbon has six protons, so it has an atomic number of six. The atomic number is represented by the symbol capital Z. And because elements are electrically neutral, Z also equals the number of electrons because for an element to be neutral, protons and electrons must be equal. Next, we will talk about mass number. But before we delve into this, it's important to clarify the distinctions between mass number, atomic mass, and relative atomic mass. These terms are often used interchangeably in various sources, leading to confusion. This confusion can partly be attributed to the fact that atomic mass is expressed in atomic mass units relative to carbon-12. Despite the complexity, it's essential to recognize these terms carry distinct meanings. So first off, what is mass number? The mass number is the number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus of an element and can be represented by the symbol capital A. It's an integer value that identifies specifically how many neutrons and protons are in the nucleus of a particular element. So for example, lithium may have a mass number of six or seven, depending on its isotope or number of protons plus neutrons. A shorthand method for showing the atomic number and the mass number of an element can be shown by the following notation. Take for example helium, it has two protons, so an atomic number of two, and two neutrons, so a mass number of four. So what is atomic mass? The atomic mass refers to the mass of a specific atom. Typically it is expressed in the atomic mass units or AUM, which also are referred to as Daltons, and it's represented by the symbol capital M. The value signifies the actual mass of a particular atom and is calculated differently for each isotope. So for example, helium has two protons, two neutrons and two electrons. So we can say it has a mass of approximately 6.70 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms or 4.035 AUM. Whereas the mass number is four because once again, there are two protons and two neutrons added together equals four. While atomic mass considers the combined mass of protons and neutrons and electrons within the atom, it's worth noting that electrons contribute only a minute fraction of the overall mass. Consequently, the atomic mass is mainly influenced by the combined mass of protons and neutrons. It's crucial to note that the atomic mass is not generally a whole number, as it's mostly determined through experimental means. While I showed an example of calculating the atomic mass earlier, the actual theoretical calculations that consider all the atomic forces are a lot more complex. So it's easier just to look up experimental values. So what is relative atomic mass then? Due to the minuscule nature of an atom's mass in kilograms, a more convenient approach was devised, which was the concept of relative atomic mass. So the relative atomic mass unit emerged, which is defined as 1 12th the mass of carbon 12. This unit is quantified as approximately 1.660 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. 
So one AUM equals approximately 1.660 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. So relative atomic masses with the symbol AR are expressed in relation to the reference point of carbon 12's mass of 12.0000 AUM. However, one AUM doesn't precisely match the masses of protons or neutrons. As a result, atomic mass and relative atomic mass are usually non-integer numbers. Relative atomic mass encapsulates a weighted average of all naturally occurring isotopes of an element, considering their respective abundances. This is useful because it gives a more accurate mass of a chemical sample, as it's likely this sample will contain isotopes. So as an example, consider protium, which is a hydrogen atom with one proton. Its mass number is one due to a lone proton, and its atomic mass in AUM is the mass of a proton divided by the AUM mass in kilograms, which is 1.675 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms divided by 1.660 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms, which equals 1.007825 AUM. Yet the relative atomic mass is 1.008. And this results from the averaging of all hydrogen isotopes based on their abundances. So might be wondering why this calculation is performed, but I will explain this in the isotopes section. Anyway, this measure indicates how many times heavier an average atom of that element is in comparison to 1 12th the mass of a carbon 12 atom. This property renders relative atomic mass a dimensionless unit, so it doesn't have any units. So we've been talking a lot about isotopes, but what are they? An isotope is essentially an element that has a different number of neutrons. So an element will be characterized by a specific atomic number or number of protons, but it can possess a different mass number. Take hydrogen, for example. It can exist in multiple isotopic forms. For example, protium with just one proton represents the most common form constituting approximately 99.9844% of all hydrogen. Deuterium with one proton and one neutron accounts for around 0.015% of all hydrogen and tritium comprising of one proton and two neutrons exists in trace amounts around 10 to the negative 18 percent to determine the relative mass the atomic mass of each hydrogen isotope is multiplied by its abundance expressed as a fraction summing these products provides the relative atomic mass. This can be calculated using the following equation. So for hydrogen, this translates to 1.007825 times 99.9844 divided by 100 plus 2.014102 times 0.0156 divided by 100 plus 3.016049 times 1 times 10 to the negative 18 divided by 100, which equals 1.008, or the relative atomic mass of hydrogen. So hopefully you understood all the concepts in this video. Feel free to leave a comment and if anything was confusing. In the next video, we will go through a few practice questions on all the topics we learnt today. So thank you for watching. Until next time.